So welcome to Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust. Um, uh, we have an atrial septal defect closure case today that we're going to be doing under general anaesthesia. She's a 62-year-old lady who had been diagnosed previously uh, with um, congenital heart disease. Uh, interestingly, um, she was advised against surgery, but she told us that she had coarctation uh, rather than any other abnormality, and she'd had no follow-up after she moved out of London at the age of 14. She is now 62. She had an uncomplicated pregnancy 26 years ago. Uh, her actual presentation was with uh, an atypical chest pain uh, along with some palpitations. Um, the breathlessness hadn't actually been too bad for some years and then over the last few months on direct questioning she did mention she was breathless. Uh, when she was examined she had a loud murmur and an ECG suggested a partial right bundle branch block pattern and so of course an echocardiogram was done which suggested uh, a quite dilated right ventricle with cyst good systolic function and even the transthoracic suggested an atrial septal defect. So I've got some stills to show you of uh, the transthoracic echocardiogram with colour flow across the septum. On further screening on transoptial echo she had a 24 millimetre hole uh, a smallish superior rim was mentioned um, and a pulmonary artery pressure of just above normal. For, uh, so the, on the MRI scan, uh, it was a 21 millimeter atrial septal defect with a 3 to 1 shunt diagnosed and normal uh, pulmonary venous drainage. And of course, no coarctation. I think that was a red herring thrown at us. Uh, you can see this is a screening TOE and at uh, zero degrees it's just over a 20 millimeter hole. And I'll take you through the pictures in the screening echo at 40 and then uh, at uh, 130 and uh, finally a, a picture which shows uh, a measurement of 26 which was the maximum um, at 47 degrees. So we're going to do the procedure with an 8 French femoral venous puncture um, upscaling after that uh, depending on the size of the hole and the device that we're actually going to use. Let me introduce the team. Uh, we've got uh, Paul Morrison as the anaesthetist and David Dawson as our uh, TOE expert. And I'll have Angela Frame assisting me. So uh, now I've got uh, clean access. And we can now proceed on with the diagnostic angiography. So we're going to take the normal set of arteries. OK, wonderful. And we'll just let it fill. So it probably is a right dominant circulation. We're now ready for the ASD closure part of this case. Okay. Okay. So, so David, would you mind taking us through the echocardiogram pictures you've just taken? Okay. So uh, up on the uh, view at the moment is a mid-esophageal um, four-chamber view. Um, and we can see on the left side of the screen the dilated right heart, uh, volume-loaded right ventricle. And in the mid atrial septal level, the secundum uh, level, there's a large uh, defect, uh, which we've already measured around about uh, 27 millimeters. Okay, fantastic. So if we sort of scoot around to the other views, because we now want to see what the rims of the device are. Uh, is this a thing that is suitable for device closure? We've done a screening echo, so we think it is. So, uh, but it'd be useful to scoot around. So now David's got to uh, about 45, 50 degrees. We can see the aorta coming in very nicely. David, what do you think about the margins there? Yeah, I think there's quite a reasonable uh, margin. Inferior, a little bit small, but do you think it looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Okay, so, so even if there's no aortic rim, then although there is some recent data that the erosion rate may be slightly higher, in fact, uh, around the world, lots of people are still closing it and splaying devices across the aorta. So if we, if we just uh, go around to about 50, 55, we'll see that uh, we can see that there's still a little bit of a rim uh, just where the aorta is. So that rim uh, equates to where the non-coronary cusp of the, uh, of the aortic valve is. So we're focusing on the ASD, and then we'll go around further to about 90 degrees. OK, and you can see at 90 degrees, uh, we're very confident about the, a, a little bit of rim available uh, towards the right-hand side of the screen. And as we pan, pan in and out, I think we'll see that uh, the ASD is slightly more uh, medial, isn't it? So uh, as we go more laterally, it sort of moves out of view. And you can see the septum there is quite thin. And so put some color on there, David. And what we'll see is uh, the true defect. Because, of course, we might have imagined it was the whole of that area. But I don't think it is. It, the true defect.
has margins on either side. And David's already measured them and feels that the biggest diameter is 27 or so. Um, okay, so we'll go to the uh, 120. And at the 120, the handlebar shot or SVC IVC shot, uh, we'll also get a, a, what the SVC margin is. And you can see that there's a fairly decent uh, rim to, to grab a hold off there, but on both sides. So uh, scooting around all of the borders, this looks uh, something that's at least an attempt at device closure should be made. And so that's what we're now going to try and do. So an MPA catheter. And it's coming up nicely. We want it to go into the right atrium, which it has done. We're now in the right atrium and the atrial septal defect. And so you can see on screen now that's gone across the ASD. And if we look on the echo, then the echo also shows that there's a wire, a bright thing that's uh, now in uh, the left atrium. So you can see that the bright thing is in the left atrium like that. So the wire has gone into a pulmonary vein. So David, would you mind showing us the difference in a pulmonary vein and the left atrial appendage? So if we go to echo, what we want to be sure of is we haven't poked this wire into the left atrial appendage. Doesn't look like it, but let's confirm given we have TOE available. There we go. So there's the wire and that's going into a vein because the vein carries on. The appendage stops. There's the appendage. So fantastic. We can see the difference between the appendage, which is at the sort of six o'clock position, uh, uh, with no, no wire in it, no bright artifact, and then the vein, uh, but you can see that's more about the sort of four o'clock position, and uh, you can see the bright wire in it. So very clear. Thank you, David. And you can see my catheter, okay, is now in the vein. Okay, I'm taking my wire out. I'm now going to take my sizing balloon because I want to see what size balloon I can I can use, what size device I can use. So, so this is going to be a 35 millimeter balloon. It'll allow a scope to stretch this defect up if we need to. If it was a smaller defect, maybe below 20, I'd use a 25 millimeter balloon. This is an exchange length stiff wire. The blackness coming through, and that's as far as I want to go. Okay, so I will. Okay, so what we're doing is we're trying to remove all the air and make it as negative as possible. Sometimes if you hold it that way, then of course the air rises and the contrast goes in. So we will clean the wire very assiduously, but I'm gonna press on the groin here to make sure that there is no bleeding, okay? Yep. So let's focus on the groin okay. and we've got this rather unfurled balloon still. Now that should go in no problem. It's a vein. We made a nick in the skin, remember at the start. So it should go in no problem. So we're doing it. Your and the wire hasn't moved. So we're going to go LAO. Let's have a look on the echo to see if all that... Oh, okay. Now I can see something interesting on the echo. Okay. You can see that on the wire, okay, there's nothing for it but to pull the wire back very slowly. On the wire is a piece of clot, okay? So we are going to pull back. We're watching that clot, okay? And that clot... Can you go to the right atrium? Okay. We're going to take the wire completely out. Okay. So, we've taken that wire out of the left side of the heart, but there's still a big ASD, so I'm still nervous about this. So, let's regroup, okay? The reason I've stopped is I've spotted that there is clot on that wire, okay? If we carried on, we would release the clot into the arterial circulation and cause the stroke, but hopefully we've prevented that happening. So, catheter, you can see there's a bit of thrombosis going on, but this dark red stuff, if you can focus down on it, just came out of my syringe. And so almost certainly that is what we saw flying about. And of course, if we hadn't been paying attention to the TOE, we would have had a fantastic result from ASD closure and maybe a stroke for the patient. So we've got to be aware of everything around us when we're doing ASD closure. Okay, MPA catheter, which is up into the pulmonary vein again. Okay, so we'll take this wire out. That's good, that's nice and straight. And just fix the wire now. And we'll advance. Okay, so. So with the balloon is sort of in the right place, we're gonna leave the wire in so the wire can stay put. Right. So we're gonna inflate the balloon and we're gonna see on echo in particular whether it's in the right spot. Okay. okay. Right, so we're gonna do a little inflation there and we're gonna see how that looks. Oh, that's looking as though on the septum it's going nicely. So I'm moving the balloon ever so slowly just trying to get it to sit across the intratal septum 
you can see that the right side is inflated so far, the left not quite so much. So I'm pushing in a little bit, trying to get the left side inflated. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's looking more like it. So I'm going to hold on to it there. Can you do some color flow measurements there? I think that balloon's moved back again, so I'll push forwards. Now, still a little bit of color. Okay, so I put 30 mils into the syringe. It wasn't quite enough, so I'm just taking a little bit more. So it's getting close to where we want to be. The balloon's a little bit mobile, as it often is. I'll put a little bit more in just to stabilize. I think that's going to be stable. Okay, so let's do a little bit more. Okay, how's that for color? That nailed it? Looks to have nailed it. Let's measure that, because we're gonna upsize the device a little bit anyway. So straight across, the, the balloon's you know, got a nice axis to it. Okay, so that's looking like a 26. And what was it on color uh, beforehand? 27, I was getting. 27, okay, yeah. so, so 26, 27 is where we're gonna be. Okay, I think uh, we've probably got enough information from there, so for this. Okay, so let's show you the preparation of the full star sheath. So we want to flush the sheath. It's a big, big sheath, so it'll need a lot of flushing. We'll take the introducer and we'll attach that through. Okay, so. Okay, so that's our sheath. That's great. So we're going to keep on feeding. You see, I, I tend to rotate as I go in. Uh, I think it means that it won't catch anything, but I'm going to screen as well. So we're across, and we're going to go up towards the vein. Now, as we get closer to the vein, screen up, please. Okay, so I don't want to push that whole sheath all the way in. So what I'm going to do is release the introducer, okay, so that I can then just push the sheath on its own a little bit further forward. Okay, so that should be in the mouth of the vein. And then... I'm going to flush this sheath out to make sure that there are no air bubbles, no clots to worry about here. Okay, so I'm pushing through the device itself. Let's again show the preparation of the device. So the device comes in several bits. Okay, so we have this. That is the pusher. Okay, so that's going to push the device up the catheter. We have the device itself. You can see that it's a lovely golden color. I went to the factory where these were made. Silver is raw, red is overbaked, and golden is a perfect color. So this is golden, so at least we know the cooking is right. Okay. We'll flush this loader mechanism. Okay, so that's fully flushed. We're going to place our cable, our pusher, through. And so we're going to push that through. Okay, so here we have Okay, a red and a blue. And now if I push the red, the blue to the red, okay, then what? look at what happens there. The forceps open up. Can you see that? They're retracted and they're opened. Okay, you can see them just coming out. Okay, okay I'm going to attach the ball into this socket and so very slowly release. Very slowly release. Oh, hang on, very slowly release. Yeah, keep on going. Okay, and a good catch is when it does that. You can see that it's pretty floppy on there. We're now going to this position here, and it's now locked. Okay, so it cannot come off. So the device underwater, and I'm going to pull the device in to our contraption. Okay, in it goes. Okay, so it's now captured. We need to flush it, but before I do that, I want to see what shape it takes when it comes out. Okay, it takes its original shape. That's what we want to see, okay? So, now I'm very happy to draw it in and then give it a very big flush to make sure there are no bubbles captured. So, we're now going to insert this device, okay? So, I'm going to hold it steady here. Would you mind pushing this forwards into this? Okay, in it goes, it's sliding in nicely. Brilliant, and let's stop there. Okay, so we have pushed it in through this loading mechanism. Okay, and so we can now dispense with the loading mechanism. Okay, but the question now is, so that's not a very tight seal, 
Okay, blood is coming backwards. Okay, which means that we are going to have no air pockets caught in front of the device because the blood is pushing everything out that way. So, if we want to okay, the device is about to come on out. Okay, so I'm going to put a little turn on my catheter, and I'm going to withdraw the catheter a bit. We're well across the uh, the septum. We can see that. Uh, so we're going to pull pull down a little bit, and I'm going to advance the device. You can see I'm advancing the device, pulling back the catheter, advancing the device, pulling back the catheter, advancing the device, pulling back the catheter. Okay, so the first dumbbell has just taken shape on x-ray and you can see it, you can just see it on echo as well. Okay, but it's not fully taken the disc shape yet. Okay, so we're going to advance a little bit further. Okay, and now it's taken the full disc shape. And you can see that on echo, much easier than on fluoroscopy. So with the disc out, I'm now going to withdraw both the sheath and the catheter as one unit. Okay, it's catching the mitral valve, which we don't really want. So we'll rotate a little bit. There we go. It's rotated out of the way of the mitral valve. I did that with a clockwise torque. Okay, and then I'm going to carry on pulling it down, really mainly, mainly on echo. So, in fact, I'm not going to bother to fluoro at the moment because the echo is very, very good. As I'm coming down, I can see that the device is moving downwards onto the septum. Yes, you can see that onto the septum. So, what we want to do is probably see around the clock to see, make sure that there isn't any septum that we aren't catching. So, it looks good at 60. That's fine. Okay. And so, let's do 120. Okay, and let's go to that handlebar shot, the SVC IVC view. Okay, so you can see that device is getting close. I just saw one image that it was trying to get uh, through the hole. Try 120, David. Okay, that's good. So you can see the device is trying to angulate and trying to get through. So I will see if I can't do a rotation of the catheter to make it look a little bit better. No, not really. So let's try a turn of this catheter. This is where the steerable catheter comes in handy. Doesn't seem to be making a big difference. Okay, so I'll push it up a bit. So it almost looks as though the device is sitting on the roof of the atrium. So if I push the disc out a little bit further. Okay, you can see that the on x-ray uh, we've got quite a lot of movement, so that's the wrong angle completely. Okay, so it's looking nice in that view. Okay, so I might deploy and see what happens. Oh, that's moved, that's fallen in. Okay, so that device fell into the right atrium. So we'll see if leading with the blob, we can't just get it back across again. Okay, so that's gone across again. You can see that's across into the left atrium again. Okay, so we'll deploy in the left atrium. Okay, I'm even gonna deploy a little bit of the central disc in the left atrium. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw it down. Show me the SVC IVC shot. No, so it's already coming through. Yeah, so that's the view we want to focus on. Okay, so that's why it's looking nasty. I think we're going to need to deploy a slightly different position. Let's try a different angle altogether. I think it's getting caught on the roof of the atrium. That's what it's doing. So it's not pulling down. You can see that you can see that it's caught on the roof. So it needs a big device, but deployed much lower down. Okay. No, nope, that's going to fall through. Okay. So we're going to need a slightly different maneuver to get this in. No, that's not going to do it. That's going to fall out again. Okay. 
So this device looks as though it's going to be too big to draw down. So if I turn it aggressively and try and draw it right down, yeah, try and keep it in view, try and keep it in view. Nope, that's clipped out. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're going to try a left upper pulmonary vein deployment. Can you show me the left upper pulmonary vein? Yeah, we're going into the vein. Okay, so we're leading up into the... Yeah, okay, fine. So what we'll do is we'll deploy the first disc in the vein. And so that's what we're doing now. We're deploying the first disc in the vein. We want to hold it there. Now, can you come to the SVC IVC view? Because that's a view that matters to us. Okay, so... Okay, so you're in the SVC IVC shot, yeah? Okay, that's all, that's good. Okay, that's well done. So we're going to draw that back as much as possible, almost to deploying. Okay, and then we're going to pull it, we're going to give it a tug and try and uh, get everything deployed at the same time. So let's just see if that works for us. So Okay, that's no, that's all in the right atrium, in the left atrium. Let's see if it's drawn it any lower down. So if I pull this, it's just got to come off the wall of it. That's the problem. It's it's stuck on the. No, that's it's better, but it's not quite. Hold still, hold still, David. Hold still. Okay, so it's closer. So those, those borders are bitten, okay? So, so let's just give David a chance to scoot around. Okay, so that is the 125 border. So we're just gonna take our time now because the device is not gonna run away anywhere just to be sure that we've caught it all the way around. Okay, so that's our 120, okay? And so is that 120 on the SVC, IVC? That's what we wanna see. So I think it has caught yeah. it. Yeah, it has caught it, but okay, there it. we go. That's perfect. Okay, so so now I'm happy that we've caught that rim. So it needed a pulmonary vein deployment to actually do it. So it's another tip and trick. Uh, so Okay, so again, the device has got a bit of tension on it. So what I'll do is I'll just try and release the tension slightly. There we go. Okay, is that better? There you go, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So I've allowed it to retake its shape. Okay, good. And so uh, we'll then go around to the uh, 60, which is looking good. We can see we've got a nice bite of that aortic rim. That's good. Okay, and I like that. And so then we'll go to 30. Okay, and we can see that it's quite a big device, and we can see that uh, it's t it's pretty close to the roof of the atrium there. So uh, this is a lady that I think uh, I wouldn't take the device out. I think it's working well, but it's uh, there's a recommendation for long-term follow-up for erosions in any case in all bigger devices, and I'd certainly want to be following her up. Okay, so I think there's a uh, there's a little bit of colour coming through the device. Uh, but I don't think that that's anything we need to worry about too much. It'll settle down as we re release the device. I think it's going to reset itself. There's, it took quite a lot of tension to put it on. Okay, so we're there all the way around. What we'll do is we'll do a tug test. Okay, so I think it's important to do a tug test. Okay, so I've done a fairly firm tug and uh, nothing much actually has happened to the device. So David, are you happy for me to release? Yep, you still look good position moved this back to the original position. Okay, so I've unscrewed it. So it was screwed up like this. I've now unscrewed it. And so with this, let's look on the x-ray while I'm looking at, while you're looking at my hands as well. Okay, so on the x-ray, the sheath is fairly close to the pincers. Okay, we don't want it miles away. We then open our pincer arms and draw it in before we release our hands because otherwise we're going to take a biopsy inside the heart. So 
We're now going to have a look at that device again. It's still possible to snare it and pull it out if we weren't happy with this final position. Okay, but looking at that echo, it's, uh, it's actually looking pretty good. And see that uh, that little bit of still color as well. You had a 27 millimeter hole. Now it's probably a three millimeter uh, little jet. So I'm not too worried by that. Okay, so I think we, we do have to be absolutely careful that we understand all of the flows that are occurring around the intraatrial septum. Uh, we know that the venous anatomy was normal, but there's no way we can leave a device in until we're happy with all of the margins being caught. Uh, but having reviewed the pictures, I think we've caught the bright part of the septum, which we thought was the roof of the atrium, and therefore I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with that. Uh, we'll look on the 3D. Okay, so I think we're going to have Fair. SVC at the top and IVC at the bottom there. Uh, and that's looking okay. Can we switch to the left side? Okay, and that's looking pretty tidily caught all the way around. Okay, I think, uh, David, any, any questions about that? Are, are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, it's looking, uh, looking very solidly caught. So it's just that flow. Just that. The question is, what is that flow? I think it might be the SVC. Just put some color on there. I think it's gonna look similar. Yeah, I think it's the SVC. Okay, fine, I'm happy. I think we were just seeing the SVC from the other side because uh, otherwise all the margins look excellent, really good bite of them. And so uh, we're going to uh, uh, finalize this case up. So I'm going to leave. Okay. And we are finished. So thank you very much for visiting Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust. We've done, and we've done a, a rather challenging ASD closure with the learning points being, uh, number one, uh, that you have to watch for clot on the wire at all times. And number two, that even when you think you've got the right size device, fitting it into the hole uh, can take a few tips and tricks and therefore it requires some experience. Uh, so thanks again for joining us and I thank the team for helping us out.